<laughs> okay, so this is dumb. What? <laughs> so, <clears throat> are you okay there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just got a little, you know, COVID. Oh my gosh. Okay, can we like make this so I don't have to cut out much? I will try. I will try. <laughs> Thank you for saying that, though. That that's actually really important <laughs> yes. that you said that. <laughs> uh, I will try. <laughs> And just in case you don't know, <laughs> since you said you'll try, mentioning the word COVID immediately demonetizes a video on YouTube. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, really? Well, that's good that you said that, too. Okay. You know, I'm cutting all that out, right? <laughs> so so what's throwing me off is because we are, uh, you know, not in studio together because we are, you know... Um, trying to stay stay away from people and um uh what do they what do they uh, shelter in place is that what they're calling it social distancing but that's the guess that's a different term we we do re- re- realize that's a term but stay at home <laughs> yeah. philanthropy no it's called stay at home oh this is going to be so miserable so apparently jim's friend is with us today <laughs> Wait, Welcome. we didn't start. No, we, we yeah, we've been going for like three minutes. No, you never said. Welcome to the Retro Zoo Super Show. I'm your host Kai, and this is oh Steven. My gosh. You should release this episode unedited. <laughs> you know, uh, if it becomes too hard to edit, that's probably exactly what I'm going to do. So, what? Jim's friend, you might as well stay hang on with us. Um, we apologize for the uh, the quality, uh, which is <laughs> actually worse than when you place. Star Wars with us. I don't yeah, know, I don't know which... what's going on with that. <laughs> it's getting better. It's actually getting a little better. Live from Kakariko Village. Welcome to the Retro Zoo Super Show. I am one of your hosts, Kai. And I'm Steven. And Jim's friend, welcome. Thank you. Uh, we are, we are, uh, we are like recording from different places because, uh, you know, that is what we're supposed to be doing right now. We are in the middle of the um, COVID pandemic. And, um, and so if you've been listening, you know that I've been, the, the show's, uh, cut last couple of weeks to try to kind of keep um, keep the social distancing thing going, but we decided to try that whole internet recording thing this time. And why wh- I got distracted because I like a me- I, when I hit record, I got a message, and so I picked up my phone to um, to look at the message, and it was just the notification that we're recording. So I am just the whole. Th- I'm 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 clearly just losing my mind here. How are y'all? Oh man, the internet is broke. It is. Or is it? You cut out a. Yeah, you cut out a lot just now. Oh, I heard it just fine. Oh, maybe it's my internet. Dang! <laughs> my computer's infected now too, with the COVID. Okay, keep going. Oh, I'm sorry. Please stop. <laughs> We're gonna get in so. <laughs> I can like we get uh, I mean nearly no hate mail on this show, but 
<laughs> but we relish we relish every piece. <laughs> you don't even see it. I see it. <laughs> I relish that you see every piece. Uh, but something tells me we're going to get it for this one. Um, wow. Uh, so, <laughs> um, I yeah. So it's been a while. It's been a while since we since we did this, and um, you have, uh, you Stephen have been on a Magic the Gathering, um, craze. Oh yeah. I which, I. I- which is actually appropriate for today's topic because Magic the Gathering is also a game that I was mildly interested in and didn't understand and immediately abandoned. Well, Magic the Gathering is a... is not real- the topic for today. <laughs> I'm about to go into my 20-minute monologue on Magic the Gathering. No, I used to play Magic. <laughs> magic, 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 magic. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, man. Hey, anything cha- any kind of change up on that department, you know, if we're going <laughs> to... I'd love to blame it on magic. No, <clears throat> magic. I used to play you know, a lot as the physical card game, and then uh, didn't play for a long time. I sold my deck. I had a really great black uh, demon vampire deck with Baron Singer and Four Singer Vampires and Four Bad Moons. Anyway, it was great, and I stopped playing magic for a long time. And then um, recently, uh, I don't know why. I, I, it might have been Atropos. Um, got me back into it or maybe i just i don't remember but for whatever reason i started playing the magic gathering arena oh i know why because they were going to have part of it was they were going to have a um a tournament it's it's gotten like league there's league play and um and i guess Focus. i was, I was going to see it at uh, dreamhack <laughs> anyway but uh but so i got in magic but then dude i got to a certain point because i'm not i decided i'm not going to spend any money on it and so I was just winning cards and like playing and you know basically level grinding you know to to, to speak in your lingo you know level grinding to get through to, to get more cards and you start playing people as you get a little better you start playing people who have spent a ridiculous amount of time and effort in making these decks that just shut your deck down so you don't even really get a play. So it's like it's your turn, and then whatever they do in their turn, it shuts you down for your turn, and and it it got kind of difficult like to keep interest and and so yeah, I played that, but I, I haven't been playing it as a lot a lot. But I left it up in the background on my computer, and both you and Atropos were like, "Are you playing Magic?" I'm like, "No, I'm not playing Magic." Why are you saying that? And I didn't realize like I had just closed my screen with the application still running. Well. And it showed in Discord that I was playing Magic the Gathering. And uh, let's and, for three days straight. For right. three days straight, exactly. Well, and, and let's and let's be clear as to why each of us asked. So Atropos probably asked because he wanted to play. Mm-hmm. I yeah. I asked because I was editing uh, the audiobook for Hallowing a Ground this evening and we were gonna try to record this thing and uh-huh. you were getting home late. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, um, I, you know, have to wake up especially early in the morning. And I oh. saw that you were playing a video game. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, is he, is he home and playing a video game when I could be going to sleep? And, oh. uh, and, but it turns out that, uh, you, you got my text and you're immediately like closing your laptop and like, no, no, no. no. Oh, oh no. what? what? <laughs> then, then you ran back out in the car and sat down. And you're like, I'm in the car right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel how I said I have a clean conscience about lying because uh, I wouldn't really be lying in that regard. I would just be a weird formation of truth. <laughs> so, um, uh, Jim Strength, have you been playing much lately? I know that you have been working yourself to death. Uh, no. <laughs> good, good to know. <laughs> Yeah, I got playing on um, uh, Monument Valley 2, which I, I guess I really should not be mentioned since it's a mobile game, but uh, mm. the first the, the first, the first game was just spectacular, and the second game turned out to be as well, but they were giving it away free, and so other Wait, than that... Wait, let hmm? me tell you what this game is about. Monument Valley 2, okay. So this is a game where you go and you build graveyards and you decorate the headstones. Like you make different monuments for based on what the what the people get, like what the income level is, and you get to design it. 
you have like some kind of gauge where they're happy or sad about is that what it is about that's my guess uh, yeah that's it that was it exactly i knew it monument valley too <laughs> the reckoning oh gosh yeah uh yeah the t- game's tough to explain because it's a it's technically a puzzle game but it's um I, it's very focused on on the visual and um very very inspired by um uh minimalist art mc escher um a lot of different shapes and such and it just has a very, very melancholy feel to it. Uh, this kind of quest that you're on is um, is really touching. And so, yeah, the second one came out, which is more focused on um, a mother-daughter relationship. Uh, so it's a puzzle game, but, you know, it's not Candy Crush. But kind of. <laughs> but kind of. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's candy crumble <laughs> uh so that has that has been about it um it's been kind of a crazy week and uh we have put off this topic for a little while because i know Stephen, that you did not want me to tackle this topic with um without yeah i was kind of you know felt sensitive about it when you hinted that you would uh you know you were gonna just go ahead and do it on your own, and <laughs> hinted. I think. I think what uh, what what Sprocket and I said. What uh, were were Spro- <laughs> or Sprocket said? You know, thanks for having me on the zoo to talk about StarCraft. Uh, yeah. That was a lot of fun, <laughs> and, <laughs> and we just waited for you to respond. It was great. <laughs> yeah, my heart sank that day. <laughs> but we are talking about StarCraft, StarCraft, StarCraft. Um, and uh, that it does jump us a little bit ahead on the uh, RTS timeline. We're going to go, go back a little bit, but we thought this might be a good topic to do since our schedules and everything have been so crazy that this is um, – that this this is something that I, I I will say we are familiar with, and by we I mean you. But I have read two novels, and I just found out that in several games, um, Sarah Kerrigan, who I will hopefully not call Nancy Kerrigan during this episode, <laughs> um, was voiced by uh, Trisha Helfer. Who was in uh, Battlestar Galactica as uh, as six? And so oh, I didn't that, know that. Yeah, that's pretty jam. And I, I that's one of my one of my all time favorite sci fi shows. I loved Battlestar, and uh, and so I thought that was fun. Well, it's funny that you said Nancy Kerrigan because that was actually the. Uh, I'm just reading that that was a. Uh, that was actually inspiration for her name. <laughs> was it really? Yes. Um, Why did she get like hit? Well, I mean, she kind of does. I, I mean, I don't want to give the plot it, away. This, these are a, things I do know is that she gets smacked around with, you know, some kind of Zerg virus, and she becomes an alien. And um, okay, so check this out. This is amazing. So Chris Metzen originally, and I'm reading this. Okay, so this is off a of polygon. Uh, Chris Metzen originally envisioned Rainer as a space cowboy. Rainer is the protagonist in the in this story. Yeah. As a space cowboy that was more space than cowboy. Kerrigan's backstory is famously on the lighter side. Blizzard named her for figure skater Nancy Kerrigan in a nod to her rival Tanya Harding, the athlete notorious for hiring her husband to break Kerrigan's leg. In this case, however, the joke was against competitor Command and Conquer and its character Tanya, because Tanya was the big, oh. girl, the, the big uh, chick lead in in, uh, in in Command and Conquer. So, oh, that's I, hilarious! And I had forgot that though. I just read that line, so I was like, "Oh, dang!" Like they were totally. This is exactly the same time period man so that's yeah that's hilarious. exactly yeah, it's, that is hilarious. i never knew that until i just read that just now so man. wow no that's pretty cool uh so starcraft uh, let's you know look 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 dude oh the other thing i know i'm gonna contribute everything i know <laughs> okay okay right go ahead so when I, I i said i read two of the novels and one of them i read because it's tracy hickman yes uh, and well, this which was, one was that which one was that which novels have you read because i've read one of them Okay, that one was The Speed of Darkness, which 
I, I'm trying to think back at the uh, at the the plot, and I don't. I think this was just like a complete slide mission. I don't. I, I don't even know that there was anybody important like in it uh, at okay. all. Um, uh, I, I I would have to look at it again to be sure of that. But it just seemed like you know just a group of random commandos uh, okay. or whatever. Uh, What's the other one you read? Wait, I'm not done with the first. Don't I rush don't... me with the things oh. that I know about this game. <laughs> okay, I let's... will be done very. Okay, so um, <laughs> it is a side story set in the first campaign, focusing on the lives of individual Confederate Marines. Mm. All right. So was it good? Ne- no, it wasn't good. Okay, it was not good. Um, and I, and I, I read it because of Tracy Hickman. I am a huge Tracy Hickman fan. I've r- read a ton of Tracy Hickman stuff. I loves me some Tracy Hickman. I, and um, and actually on the Techno Funk Boy um, YouTube channel, uh-huh. we are doing a series of videos on running Dragonlance, which was also tra- Tracy Hickman, uh, and just giving like DM tips on on running this this old first edition. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons game, running it as a fifth edition game, um, which I'm having a lot of fun doing. And so I've, I've just, I, I like Tracy Hickman quite a bit, but I don't particularly so like a, many uh, of his solo novels. Uh, he's, he's much better with a co writer. But uh, the second one I read was extremely good, and that one was much more recent, but that was Evolution, written by Timothy Zahn. And that one was much more focused on the main characters and what was hilarious about it is that I well I, there was a lot of times I was texting you about these characters because I haven't played uh, uh-huh. much of the games I I know some of the names from the parts of the games I did play um, but I also know all of the names because of uh, Heroes of the Storm and, mm-hmm. and yeah. I'm, so I've seen all these people and I was like oh that's you know that's so and so um is, is is that person a good guy or a bad guy or what? And then I, w- I would either text you or look it up. And so I was getting a, actually getting quite a bit of the story, which is, um, you know, how I, I kind of filled out uh, uh, Sarah, Car- Sarah, is it Sarah? It's not Nancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah Kerrigan's so, uh, yeah, uh, story a little bit. But I was looking up all their stories so that I could keep up with things. But it was kind of cool because I, you know, I have like this now a mental image of all these characters because of heroes, uh, heroes in the storm. Yeah. The, all right. <laughs> uh, right. And, uh, uh, and Ra- Raynor is one of the few characters that I actually have and possessed in heroes. And so I do play him quite a bit because he's I a, don't have that many characters. He's a free character, everybody. <clears throat> um, so <laughs> sorry, sorry, that was a little stab. Um, yeah, I read I read Starcraft's uh, Liberty Starcraft Liberty's Crusade by Jeff Grubb, but I read that when I was like seventeen, and so I have no recollection of it. I just remember enjoying it, and I would really be interested. Oh, that's in one of the first. Yeah, that was even and, before Speed of Darkness. Um, yeah, it was the first one. Evolution is the last one. It came out like four years ago. Well, it's funny because uh, the Liberty's Crusade bolstered the um, the story in the original StarCraft and Brood Wars. And I think the interesting thing about then I forget. So my love for the original campaign in StarCraft One it had a very verbose campaign and I, I thought it was excellent you know you <clears throat> just to start into it like you lay the, the the premise of starcraft if you don't already know is that there are three different distinct races and it's a it's a sh- real-time strategy game and each race has uh separate and unique units m- mostly i think uh, n- pretty much exclusively unique units even even the worker units have different abilities then or at least they summon buildings in different ways you know so that so the three races are zerg uh protoss and terran and in the original campaign you start out with as terran and um and, and the original starcraft and you play through the terrans um their whole campaign and then it leads you into uh, either the Zerg or the Protoss. It's been so long since I played it. Of course, it's going to lead into one of those. It's going to lead into the next one. So, and then you take on the next race. And I kind of want to think it was uh Zerg 
it is a second race in in the original campaign. So and then and then you you finish the story with Protoss. Well, then in Brood Wars, uh, which was this expansion. It did the same thing, except this time you started, I think, with Protoss, and then you played Terran, and then did Zerg or something like that. But you, but they, they unfold the story, and so the 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 original story is basically the Terrans. The whole story is the Terrans are exiles from Earth in the original StarCraft, and they've been sent on this ship. It's basically like Earth is full. And so instead of sending somebody to Australia, like the British Empire used to do, you know, they send their prisoners to Australia, uh, Earth sends their prisoners off into space. And these massive, I imagine them as Wally, the movie, the Disney movie type ships, <laughs> except they're not fast. It's, instead of fat tourists, they're like slaves, or not slaves, but prisoners. And they're basically just, hey, get out of here, go off into the deep reaches of space and start your own colony. You know, we don't care. Just get off Earth. So they have these massive. Sh- they have a fleet of ships, and they mm-hmm. go off into space to kind of start afresh. And um, and they st- they start this colony on Marsera, and uh, they start getting they start running into the Zerg, which is an alien species as far as they know. They don't know anything about it. The Zerg started taking over their cities and stuff, and they're fighting them. And then and this all unfolds in the campaign. And then uh, this other race comes in, the Protoss. And they are like really the Zerg are very biological, kind of like from the movie Aliens. They're kind of like very biological and and just fleshy and goopy, and they and they swarm like insects. And they are their, your first uh, antagonist. And then the Protoss come in and start. They've been following the Zerg all over the galaxy, just blowing them up or they, ever they find them. And you know the. Just, just, just for a, a possibly a younger audience that might be listening, or for anybody else that might be interested, you know, you, you see this taken from uh, lifted out of the Halo stories um, from the the video game, you know, with with the, with the um, the flood, and the you know, it's like that's like kind of like the Zerg. It's it's kind of interesting how these themes have translated into to different genres, uh, at least into the Halo world, which, and I know that the Halo was a book actually, so I don't know which came first the Stark after Halo in terms of uh, actual story, but they're definitely feeding off of each other. They, there's a similarity between. Wait, hold on. Halo was based on a book. Halo was based on a book. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty dang sure. At least I heard that when I was a kid. I don't know. These are, I'm reaching back. Like we're, this is, there's very little prep on this show, which is great because I love this topic. So I'm, I'm fine to do this. It's just, but, are you just making up crap? Is that what's no, going on? No, here? I well, possibly because memories a lot of times are made up. You know, you, you I'm, I'm pulling open these dusty file cabinets of I my know. mind and the, the, the halo, the halo story was a, was a book, I believe. Okay. All right. I, I, all right, we're, we are we are looking this up. I heard a rumor from my friend about Halo being very loosely based off a book. Um, there um, <laughs> in the response. So no, not not uh, not directly. Um, okay. Okay. So all right. So what they're uh, and what people seem to be saying is they're pulling a lot of stuff from a lot of different different uh, different books. Like oh, it was it was Ring World or something. like that. Well, that's yeah. Okay, so of. that's it. So that that has n- nothing to do with it. I okay. I'm a hu- I'm actually a huge fan of Ringworld novels. Okay, but but, but, the, there's... but you you know, like if you look up Ringworld, like it looks okay. like the ha- the Halo images. I mean, it's like exactly that they pulled that entire concept. Well, but okay, but the Ringworld. I mean, the Ringworld is an adaptation of the Dyson Sphere. Because what, um, what, uh, like the, like the vacuum cleaner? Yes. I knew it. I knew he had, like, Edward Dyson was into this. <laughs> okay. So, Dyson Sphere, if you've, if you know, um, if you know Star Trek Next Generation, you know the Dyson Sphere, cause they, that's where they find Scotty. Um, it is, it basically, they, they create this giant sphere to, in case a star and they, you know, they live on the inside of this sphere where they can, uh, you know, basically collect and use all of the sun's energy, uh, the star's energy, uh, instead of just the, the small part of it that lands on the planet. Um, but what Larry Niven was doing in ring world 
and this was this was in 1970, is that he he. He wanted to make a realistic inter- intermediary step between a planet and a Dyson sphere because the Dyson sphere was just like this massive, huge Too undertaking. Big, almost. Yeah, it, and yeah. it's just massive resources. But he wanted uh, the the Ring World was something that you could do with with the material that you had in the solar system, and. It's basically it, it's just a, it's a ring around the uh, around the sun, and um, so you know it collects. You, you end up collecting more energy from the sun than you uh, obviously would just from one planet, but it doesn't take all the resources that that a that a full sphere would do. Um, but the Ringworld novels have no space marines. There's no no war. no no. no. But There's you got to no- know the whole Halo, even the name Halo. Yeah. Is this idea of a ringed planet, you know, in the right. in the, in the games, and so, so Ring World is that's a pretty unique concept. I yeah, think. well, yeah, I mean, it's definitely so, a source, so, and like, so, so, I mean, this the 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 space marine. I mean, the what, the covenant, what is it? Mas- yeah, it's, Master it's, Chief is Master is, Chief, and then there's the definitely covenant, there's coming the from. Yeah, coming from uh, Starship Troopers and John Stakely's armor. Um, yeah, it seems that yeah, they seem to be pulling from so, a lot of stuff. So they are, and so okay. So then, so let's just say they're taken from Ring World. And this is going to turn into the Halo episode because so Halo is pulling from Ring World and the whole planet side thing. But then the Space Marines, uh, you know, the Master Chief, and then you've got uh, the Covenant, which are like the Protoss, and then you have the Flood, which are like the Zerg. They basically lifted out three different race, distinct races that all act very similarly. I mean, do the the Covenant have shields? They shoot energy weapons. The flood are biological and infest things, and it's just like it's 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 interesting how when you do something that's uh, I, yeah it's it, so that's I guess I you know to get back to Starcraft it's just another shade of their influence. I mean this this is a profound a profoundly influential game. Hey, it's Kai here. We recently finished our latest EP, Quest of the Dragon Warrior. It's an electronic tribute to Dragon Warrior and the amazing music that game gave us. We're really excited about how this music came out, and we want you to have it for free. If you go to technofunkboy.com slash dragonwarrior and sign up for our weekly newsletter, you'll get the songs to download and keep for free forever. That's technofunkboy.com slash dragonwarrior, or check the show notes for a link. The story is the, the, that the Terrans are stuck. They're fighting the Zerg and the Protoss, and then the, you know, eventually, uh, the story unfolds that uh, the Zerg have this Overmind creature, which is actually um, it's like a singular point of existence that influences I, the. I almost said your mom. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> my mom was the Overmind at a period yes. of my life. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So the the Overmind communicated with uh, Cerebrates, which were Cerebrates were like uh, giant brains that lived on these planets, and uh, and then the Cerebrates controlled the Overlords, which uh, in the in, in turn you know directed the Zerg's military. So the Terran are fighting these guys. The Protoss come in. They're like this ancient dying alien race, but they have all this technology to supplement their forces. And uh, so it just it just started this really cool idea. It was a really cool story. It fascinated me. I mean, I remember being, man, I was like, I don't know, dude, 10 or 11. And my brother told me about it. My older brother told me about it. I was like, oh, I heard about this game where there's three races. And he was telling me about it first. And I was like, whoa, that sounds really cool. And then we ended up, I think we, so this was back when we were little. And so mom and dad would give us like 20 bucks each on Christmas, the week of Christmas. And we'd go to the mall and we'd, we'd have that 20 bucks or 30 bucks to buy presents for everybody in our family. So you'd buy a $5 something for so-and-so and and a $5 something, you know? And so we, we, and, uh, that year there was a, there was a 
games uh, shop in the mall called uh, Babbage's or so- something like that. I can't remember. It was an old video game store. And we went in there and we had talked about it, StarCraft, and, and my brother and I were like, well, if we put our money together, we could buy StarCraft. And so that was our Christmas present. We didn't get our parents anything that year. That was our Christmas present to each other was that we <laughs> both we bought StarCraft together. We could bind our money to buy StarCraft. And it was funny because we both played it a little bit, but he, he wasn't really into it. He kind of lost interest after the first week. But I cracked out on it. And that's the beginning of my life. That's that's my early memories, man. It was like gaming, playing StarCraft. That's the game I played the most. It's the game I... I used to set up a video camera, a VHS camera, and record myself playing so that I could watch and critique myself. This is before that was an ability in StarCraft. I, I would play on Battle.net uh, in the early, you know, in the late 80s, late 90s, uh, 90, 99, and then 2000, I guess. And and then uh, I played it a lot. And then we, my, we went to Romania. My dad got a job in Romania for a while. And I discovered computer cafes. Like, I didn't realize, like, all these kids, ev- like, oh, hundreds of computers with the big old CRT monitors or whatever. Like, just these dark rooms. And people were playing Counter-Strike and, and StarCraft. And what are the games I play today? <laughs> Counter Strike and StarCraft. It's like, <laughs> but I just—it was so amazing, dude. Like to see all these kids, and and I went to a little school there, and uh, and while we were living in Romania, and I remember I would pay for all my little classmates because the dollar was worth like, I don't know, a lot more than than their currency, and so I could afford to pay for all my friends in class to go to the computer lab and <laughs> I'd pay for everybody to get a computer and we just I felt like a baller but we had so much fun though man and so that that enhanced my love for StarCraft and I started a clan and uh, when I got back home you know I, was, I stayed into it I, I started I had a homestead website where we were, we were the Ronin clan and like we all everybody in our clan had a Japanese name you know I was Sanjuro uh, and my buddy was Mishima and then I forgot. I had a, I could, my cousin's name was Hiraku. Like anyway, we were all like these sweet Japanese names, and we pretended like we were Ronin, like you know, <laughs> wa- warriors without a, la- a master, and uh, and so it was fun, man. Like I, that was like that was that was the golden age of gaming for me. You know, this this kid and StarCraft was really at the, it was the tip of the the spear for that. You know, it was just such a such a fun game, such a diverse game. But yeah, so StarCraft. After that, man, I stopped playing. I played for a while, and then I uh, kind of did some different games. And, and, and uh, Mech Warrior Three, I think, was my next big crack out game. But um, I got StarCraft Two not long afterwards, and uh, and then I, yeah, I totally. It's the same. It's happened all over again. The difference was I didn't get into the plot with StarCraft Two, um, and so that's that's why I have a little bit of a disconnect with the story and not as interested in it you know i'm just i'm like i, I can't tell you anything about the starcraft 2 yeah story. and that's and that's what that's what trips that would trip me out because um uh you know the uh the, in the when when i was reading the book and i was asking you questions and uh you know okay so what's all this that that happened with with nancy kerrigan and you were like um oh yeah that was a long time ago but you know apparently uh Tanya Harding hired. I'm like, no, I know. I mean, Sarah Kerrigan. You're like, oh <laughs> yeah, something bad. I don't know. And, and I was like, you're the StarCraft person. <laughs> How are you not answering all my questions for me? And uh, oh, who was it that um, Valerian? Yeah, Valerian is is somebody. <laughs> I don't <laughs> see. I don't. I don't know. Dude. StarCraft Two lore. I cannot tell you. I just. Dude, with StarCraft 2, I jumped straight into multiplayer and never played the never played the campaigns. Yeah, so um, I, I, I think I, I think I think he's like the son of the Emperor or something in the first game. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Korhal, like the sons of Korhal or or uh, Acturus Minx. I don't remember. Uh, Acturus Minx is the leader of the yes the, the Confederacy uh, or whatever. Yes, and um. He's the one that killed or condemned uh, Sarah Kerrigan to, to, the, to die, or he thought she was dying. She became the 
See, that's gotcha. all original StarCraft like story. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, you know, by the time I was reading the Timothy Zahn novel, you know, he was in charge of everything. And I remembered him from, from Years of the Storm. Um, and I thought he looked cool, but, but it was like, okay, is he a good guy? And you're like, I don't know. And it's like, dude. <laughs> I don't. I still don't know. I never looked it up. I was like, oh, what? I'm not going to play the campaign. I'm just going <laughs> to. Well, see, so that's another. And the reason is, dear Lip, because StarCraft is really about the multiplayer. And, uh, you know, the, there's some games which really lean on their campaigns and the story to be told. That's why I've always thought of StarCraft as like a higher order game because it doesn't need a story. You can have one. It's fun. A side note. But the game is really like a, it's a unique chess-like game where there's pieces that do certain things and watching professionals who have mastered you know, or her work on mastering the inner relationship between the different races and different strategies and timings and everything. And, uh, you know, watching them play is fascinating, especially when you know the mechanics of the game, because you see them do things that you never would have ever thought possible in a multiplayer setting. But, yeah, but, but I mean, in it, the game is complicated enough to where when Google's deep mind finally mastered go, Beat consecutive, you know, consistently beat the, the the world championships champions at Go. They switched it to a harder game, which was StarCraft. I'm not sure if it's StarCraft Two. I think it's StarCraft. I think it's StarCraft Two because the program that runs is um, Alpha Star, and it's basically Google supercomputer playing people on Battle.net. And mm. and so and they. I don't know if it always identifies as Alpha Star. Or or what? I think it does, but a lot of people use that as a handle. Maybe Alpha Jim's friend Star knows. Played as a barcode. As a barcode? Yeah, you couldn't see who it was. So like, like when you match in the matchmaker system with Alpha Star, you don't see a username. You just see. Oh, you don't lines. see a username when you're playing as Alpha Star. See, I interpreted glad, that. I am glad you understood that. <laughs> yeah. 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 For for those wondering why Jim's friend isn't talking a lot, that, that's why. <laughs> yeah, he's uh there's a disturbance of the force. But <laughs> I knew I was waiting for him to say something because I know he's followed Alpha Star cl- more closely than I have. And so here he is. Yeah, I've probably watched hundreds of Alpha Star replays. You've watched hundreds? Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's it's amazing. I have not watched that many. I've probably watched five. But and it's very interesting because Alpha Star does things that a regular player wouldn't do because they seem like a bad idea. But then it's great watching like commentators talking about Alpha Star playing and and you'll realize like or as they're realizing like wait a second, Alpha Star is discovering new strategies for this game that we've never considered before. Because it's run the num it's run the numbers. And, and so I mean the, the the amazing thing is if you got to think about StarCraft is like uh, when you see it with the um, the graphical user interface, you know, with the graphics that you see, the character, you know, little creatures on the screen and stuff running around like ants, you know, and you're controlling them. That's how we interpret it. But a computer would interpret it as lines of code. And so all the games actually can be saved as lines of code and they can be fed into another computer, which can interpret them, which is in this case, you know, uh, Google's DeepMind, you know, the Alpha Star project. Mm-hmm. And so it's a really fascinating and I actually heard Lex Friedman who's an MIT scientist who is an AI expert on a podcast uh, a few months ago uh and he was discussing StarCraft as you know this is AI the leading AI experts are watching StarCraft like they're watching Google do this. And it's very scary but it's a beautiful thing, you know. I I get terrified every time you start talking about StarCraft myself, so I totally yeah. get it. I mean, imagine that knowing about StarCraft will actually, you know, make you more aware of your impending doom because you'll know, like, oh, this AI overseer that's now controlling my life <laughs> actually knows how to play StarCraft really well too. <laughs> and when you this go is- StarCraft, 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 it's gonna be like, meow, meow, he is meow, being sarcastic. 15,000 volts of electricity now. This is, yeah. this, this is how Terminator starts with StarCraft. 
We we have we have <laughs> we have started Skynet. It didn't actually start with you know the uh, the broken off arm uh, and the 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 chip from the Terminator. <laughs> it actually starts uh, with Blizzard. <laughs> Yeah, it's an amazing game. I mean, it, it's interesting <laughs> that it's you know, yeah, they kind of stumbled onto it. I mean, it became it became the national South Korea in the early two thousands. Yeah, you know, and and it it wasn't until I uh, uh, I, I actually started playing it. And I did play I did play several levels of it, uh, not a lot, but several levels. Mm-hmm. That um, you know, it really did start to like get straight in my head the timeline of these things because that that whole time period i mean i like really started um pc gaming in 95 96 and so i, I you know i i played warcraft but i i don't I, I didn't get warcraft new it probably was a year or two old but, um and then warcraft 2 um was probably newer when i got it um i don't i don't think i got it the second it hit the shelves or anything like that but uh it was right around there and then starcraft comes out like what uh, originally in 98 and so that was right about that time as well but like i like i compressed that whole timeline in my head and so when i started i uh and, and me being the guy who does play for the story cuz you know jrpgs um you know i was i was expecting like like Warcraft one in space where, you know, it's like, yeah, there, there might be some people who are mentioned, but not really, you know, and, in the, you know, the, the plot is mostly, uh, yeah, we saw the enemy over there. Let's go, let's go hurt him. And, um, but there, there, I mean, even, even in the first battles of, uh, Starcraft one, there's a lot going on. You already you already start figuring out it's like ah you know the uh, the the human government is, is is not all that squeaky clean and they seem to be pretty corrupt and uh-huh. um and they're you know uh, Rainer's already pissing them off just by trying to help somebody and so there's a lot of like uh, fighting amongst your team uh, as well as uh, you know against. Uh, uh, well, in those early battles against the Zerg, and um, uh, so I, yeah, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was. It, it was. They they had they had taken kind of those those story elements that um, were so lacking in the original Warcraft that they did expand in in later you know in later iterations and and expand what was going actually going on in Warcraft one, but um, really started figuring out it's like hey we need some actual characters to connect with and. Um, follow along with uh, along the way. It's a more personality besides here are humans, here are orcs. You choose one, that's fine. Everything right. else is the same. And, uh, and so that, that well, I really the- like. And that, that really, as I, as I started reading, you know, like Timothy Zahn, I started realizing how much plot there has been and, and it ended up being. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, you know, I, I, I don't knock StarCraft 2 by, the fact that I haven't played the plot, um, yeah, I just haven't played it. And in StarCraft One, actually, when I originally got it, I started playing the the campaign. But then, when I realized I could just get all the units in multiplayer, then I started playing multiplayer before I ever even finished the campaign at StarCraft. And I remember playing on Bnet early on and like people talking about the campaign and, and i would just tell people i well, I've never played it like what you never played it so finally out of guilt i just like well, let me just play the campaign and i played through the whole thing and i loved it and the, one of the funny things is, is as recently when i've watched a couple of recaps uh i think for we were talking about it a while ago or something like that for whatever reason i watched a recap of this the whole storyline of starcraft and they left out tassadar who is like this very important character in the original StarCraft, not in Brood Wars, but I think, I think it was, uh, yeah. in the original StarCraft before the expansion. And so he's like the main guy you're talking through to the whole, and the whole story kind of like you're talking to him as Jim Rayner and as the Zerg. I think he, you know, I think the Zerg might've been the last, I I can't remember which order it was, but as the Protoss, you're, you are a Praetor and, um, you, interact a little bit with the Terrans um, but you're playing it from the Protoss perspective so when you switch campaigns you're playing it from a protagonist's perspective in that race 
Yeah. And so I think when you play the Zerg, you play a Cerebrit, which was like an underling to the Overmind. And so, you know, even in the Zerg, you're playing a pro, you know, kind of a protagonist of that race. And so I remember in the Protoss, like it's, he's referenced in the Terrans and in the Protoss campaign and then finally the Zerg campaign that the, the main, this main character was like, his name is Tassadar. And dude, he was such a great, like noble character. And he ends up flying a carrier. He kills himself. He sacrifices his life to destroy the Overmind. And it was so beautiful, bro. And like, I remember like tearing up as a kid, like watching Tassadar, like, and he's like channeling all his energy because he, I think, dabbled with the Dark Templar. Because I don't think the Dark hmm. Templar were a, it wasn't a unit until Brood Wars, but they were mentioned in the original StarCraft campaign. They're mentioned like the, there was like a like a faction of the Protoss that kind of didn't agree with the rest of them, and it you know it's hashed out later in the stories. But you get the feeling that Tassadar is channeling Dark Templar energy, and he flies the carrier into the Overmind and blows it up, and it's super awesome. It's so beautiful. It's like it's a cutscene at the very end of the game, or and um, but I, but but so I was sad about that, but but yeah, the story just, the, just, the story is compelling. Just as a quick note, mm-hmm. I oh, I have Tassadar's character in Heroes of the Storm. <gasps> you do? I didn't know they had do Tassadar. They? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. I know they have him. Um, I'm... Do they, though? I did not know that they had Tassadar. Yep. Oh, my goodness. I did not know. I might start playing Heroes of the Storm again. <laughs> have you been playing it recently? No, I haven't. I, I, um, I, I was... I. I really do enjoy that game, but um, it was one of those things. It's like I am not actually making any progress on any games because uh-huh, I'm just uh-huh. playing this. And uh, and there's so many games I wanted to get to this year. So, like, uh, I've I've gotten uh, uh, in Baldur's Gate. I've made it to Baldur's Gate. Well, there you go. Which is I think chapter five of seven. And so I'm I'm well well into that one. Um, but yeah, it was, it was one of those things. I was really enjoying it, but at the same time, it's like I'm also not actually playing anything else because of this game, and so I just need. Yeah, well, that's kind of how it was with me and Magic. I mean, that's kind of what it's kind of devolved into. Is like Magic is like I'm just like crack. It's like it's like crack. I just can't yeah. stop playing it, and and I don't know. <laughs> Next episode <laughs> is going to be an intervention, <laughs> Magic intervention. <laughs> Oh Welcome man! Cards. Yeah. <laughs> See, if I use the cards, I think I'd be able to break my habit. But it's because everything is so streamlined online with the uh, and Magic Arena. That, yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's actually it's very well developed. The only thing is, is you get you like I said earlier, you meet these people who have they just have cheese cheesy cheese decks, and you know. I don't know. It makes me want to build a cheese deck, but then I'm like, do I really want to build a cheese? You know, do I want to be cheesy because I've been cheesed? That's a great. That's a great uh, <laughs> question. A gaming like an all like a a dark ultimate gaming question. Like, do you want to cheese because you've been cheesed? Is it a vengeance <laughs> thing, dominion? Thing? So anyway, Starcraft, 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 Starcraft. Yeah, it's a great game. Starcraft one and two, and uh, I um. I personally play Zerg. I play Protoss and Starcraft 1. I never p- played the expansion. I mean, I did play it, of course. I never got into it. Like, I never... When Brood Wars came out, I actually did not transition to Brood Wars. They had too many new units. It messed up all my old strategies, and I did not want to change. And so I played Starcraft, the original Starcraft for another two or three years uh, and did not participate in the campaign. In Brood- and... Because I remember I did not like... They took they took the power they they nerfed a bunch of units by putting other units in like um, the Zerg got lurkers, uh, which was like this underground unit that would burrow that shoot spikes up and it just it just messed up all my ground strategies with Protoss because I was playing Protoss then, and then they um, the Zerg also got uh, a, an anti air unit. They already had the Scourge, but they got another anti air unit, and they. Um, the, the, end, the devourer was trash but like, uh, it sucks it wasn't just the devourer it was every 
I think it was that all of my plays were heavy air plays. Like I basically was, I was into the golden armada, you know? And so, which is, which is basically like pro tosses, like every big, every big ship, you know, like kind of like you could, they had a great space fleet, but the golden armada, like one of the reasons it was the best because no other race had any other support air support. So, the, the devourer might have sucked, but but if you played pro if you played against another Protoss player, well then they had the uh, they had the little anti air ship I forgot what it was called, and then also Corsair. they get the Corsair, and then they gave the um, the Terran had one too. I think they yeah, got the Valkyrie. Viking, the Valkyrie, and the Valkyrie was vicious. The Valkyrie was good, and and so it just it just changed. Like I had to remember all these, and I think I just. I had gotten halfway decent. I was playing ladder. Um, I was playing the ladder, uh, and then when the, when the new units came out, it just changed all my strategy. I didn't feel like so. I just and you had the option not to switch. It was like, well, I'll just play Star. I'll just keep playing the original Starcraft. I don't have to play the expansion. And so, but unlike, so when Starcraft two came out, they had three expansions: Wings of Liberty, Heart of the Swarm, and um, Legacy of the Void. Which one added new units, or well, obviously the say, say what? Legacy of the Void. That was the third expansion. New units. He said Legacy of the Void. Uh, Jim's friend is probably correcting me on something that I'm wrong about. Legacy of the Void was the third expansion. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it wasn't. Well, I mean, it was the second expansion because uh, Wings of Liberty was the game. It was StarCraft. Two Wings of Liberty. Yeah, but you called Wings of Liberty the first expansion. So. Oh, right, 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 right. No, so it wasn't. It was the original game. So, so Heart of the Swarm was the second expansion, and or, or yeah, it was the expansion, the first expansion, whatever. You, you, semantics, yeah. Like so, but they all added new units, and and that time around, I actually stuck with it. Like I, I every time because they they started massively affecting the gameplay. So from from the first expansion to or the first from from wings of liberty of starcraft 2 to the expansion uh heart of the swarm there was a major change i can't remember all the changes from into heart of the swarm other than new units but the biggest one happened in legacy of the void where they got rid of uh beginning of they they gave you extra workers at the beginning increased the speed of the game immensely like things started happening within the first two minutes of the game whereas before you know it took you four minutes kind of or you know to get into the meat of the game and so and if a game lasts 15 minutes or 20 minutes on average then that time just it changed everything so legacy of the void was very difficult for me when i first started playing it it was it moved so much faster <laughs> it's that Faster than the game I was playing. The whole thing moved. Anyway, but was that faster than the game I was playing? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, a little. Uh, for some reason, I might be having internet connection problems too. Ah, uh, well, that does about does it for today. As everybody's internet craps out, uh, which is one of the fun parts about doing podcasting during uh, during the uh, COVID stuff. And uh, all trying to get this done from home. But we do appreciate you joining us. <laughs> and hope that you'll uh, join us again next week. Uh, please keep in mind the link to the Discord server in the show notes page. Uh, if you uh, are so inclined and are able to support us, please check out patreon.com slash technofunkboy. Um, the goal for... Uh, the, hopefully the near future is to, to get to the point where we are in the black for the show, that we are breaking even on expenses and such for the show. And uh, so we would really enjoy, uh, enjoy your support in that. Uh, if you are not able to support us that way, you can still support us through rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcast or your favorite app. A podcast app and otherwise thanks again for joining us if there is anybody else on the line uh thank y'all for joining me too <laughs> i'm here yeah i can hear you. sorry <laughs> for all the internet problems that's not my fault we did pretty good we i mean you know yeah we got a full episode out okay. um so 
Well, sorry for rambling so much about StarCraft. I just love this game. Yeah. So, yeah, if, if, if there's anything like, truly important that we need to hit later, uh, I'll, I'll hit it solo. You don't have to be here for that. Anyways, I'll <laughs> see y'all later. <laughs>